Hey, while you in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Have you been to church before? Yeah. Now, when the last time you been to church? Let's get personal. When the last time you been to church? Okay, been some years, okay. Now, are they preaching God's word really in the church? Not always. That's 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 even. I would rather you said not at all. I would rather you had said that because not always is you sometimes do it and sometimes you don't. Now let me ask you this: Y'all can engage too. Now who um between this picture and that picture, without giving it away, who does the world consider to be Jesus Christ? This one. You agree? You agree? What if I was to tell you that Jesus Christ is a so-called black man? Have you ever heard that before? You heard it before, but do they teach it in church though? Why not? They don't want us to know the truth. I like that answer better than sugarcoating because that's what it boils down to. And that's the reason why we have all these issues in our communities because of lies. Let me, let me get the scripture first. Let's go to Revelation 1 and 1 and then jump to 1 and 14. Did you say you knew Christ was a black man? You say you knew Christ was a black man? A little bit? How you, how you know? Where did you hear that from? Did they show you at the scripture you remember? Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. But now we got the proof right here to prove it. I have the Bible. That's right. You believe in the Bible? Good, good, good. Read that. Junior. Revelation 1 and 1. Let's get to the point. And then after 1 and 1, get to the point. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 1. Bring it out. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show his servants things which must surely come to pass. So this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The root word of revelation is to reveal. We're in the last book of the Bible, so he's going to reveal Jesus Christ. Now, you, you think about it like this. This book right here, this is a thick book, right? So it's fair to say that in this big book that it does have a description of Jesus Christ. Because some people in the church say, well, it doesn't matter what God looks like. God is the spirit. God is all colors. You heard these things before, right? But we got to lean on what the word of God say. Hey, listen up, brethren. Hey, check it out. We go, we go uh, bring out the proof right now. What's your name, by the way? Laquan. Nice to meet you. My name is Ariel. Let's get that 1 and 14. Come on. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Bring it up. about to reveal Jesus Christ. Now, here's the proof. His head and his hands were white like wool. Come on. As white as snow. That said his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, we have the words right here. And we have uh, the, the illustrations right here to prove it. Right? Because we also have visual illustrations because our people are visionary people. So we have the true description, well, the accurate, the most accurate description. We're not saying that's actually him, but we have a description right here, right? Now it said, read that part again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So now again, my, my brother, we out here showing the true description of Jesus Christ. It said his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now out of these two pictures... Which image has white hair and woolly in texture? Right here. His hair was white in color and woolly in texture. Just like your hair, sister. Just like your hair. Just like your hair. He had white woolly hair. But where we get this image from? It's actually a painting of uh, from of Caesar Bogera. He was a real person. He was a real person. So this man actually lived. He was actually a pedophile. 
He was. We got more descriptions, right? So we got the texture of his hair and the color of his hair. Read on. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like what? And his feet like unto fine brass. So when it says his feet like unto fine brass, it's talking about the color of his feet. Right. So do you know what color brass is? Because it says his feet is like brass. You know what color brass is? What about you, bro? Brass. What color? What about you? You know what color brass is? Brass is like dark brown, like golden. Yeah, golden, dark brown, a derivative of brown. Right. Right. It's a derivative, derivative color of, of brown. So is it fair to say that your feet is the same color as your body? If you take out your shoes, your feet the same color as your body, right? What about you? All right. So we agree there. So we deal with some uh, pure logic right here. So we got the texture of his hair and the color of his hair, right? Read on. As if they burn in a furnace. So that derivative color of brown, imagine if you burn that. What, what color would that become if you burn that? If you take something brown and you burn it, what color would it become? White? Well, you think about ashes, but say if you burn anything, what darker, there you go. Is it fair to say, Laquan, like if you burn anything, it gets darker? There you go. I'm not talking about the end result of it. I'm talking about the process of it. So, according to the Bible, his head and his hairs were white in color, woolly in texture, and his skin was dark. That's right. So, according to the Bible, this would be a more accurate description of Jesus Christ. That's right. Not this right here. Because again, this image right here is based on the actual person named Caesar Bogera. You ever, who heard of Leonardo da Vinci? Right. He, Leonardo da Vinci, he came up with all type of inventions, but he was also an artist. And he was contracted by Pope Alexander V, the Sixth, to paint his son, Caesar Bogera, to be the next image of Jesus Christ. But this man was a pedophile. But you think about it though, how does this equate to today? Let me ask you this. Among the black community, let's deal with the black community, right? Is it love in the black community or hatred in the black community? Hate. Right. And you might, and we're going to equate the hatred in our community based on this right here. Because what, right, what nationality, what race is this person right here? What race is he? He's white. But yeah, we go to church every Sunday worshiping and praising the white image of Jesus Christ. But yeah, we look at our people with so much hatred. And the, and the love that we have for this image, it translates to when we see other white people. Like black people, we can't, or Hispanic people, we, we can't even go in any neighborhood, right? But let a white person walk through the neighborhood. He, he won't get touched. You ever wonder that? You know why? It boils down to this. Because of the image that we worship. Because we see a white image of Jesus, and we think that all white people are Christ. We think all white people are righteous and holy. But yeah, we look at each other and we see niggas. Right? Let's get Leviticus 1917. But we have to come back to who we are. We have to come back to the truth. Because the truth has separated us from who we are. And through the process of time, us being pushed this image, it's been taught to, for us to hate our people. Self-hatred. You ever see sisters walking around with blonde hair? Who the hell wears blonde? What race of people wears blonde hair? So why the hell is black people, even the darkest, most darkest sister, walking around with some blonde weave on? Looking crazy as hell. It's the, always the darkest sister, bro. It ain't the light-skinned sister. It's always the blackest one. That hair don't match your body. But you know why? It's self-hatred right here. Because we've been taught that this is the image of righteousness. This is the image of purity. I'm going to hit you with something else, but let's go to the Bible. Because the Bible talks about hatred. Read on. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Bring it out. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. You shouldn't do what? Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. So we're not supposed to hate our, our brothers. We brothers. We brothers. Everybody out here, we brothers and sisters, correct. But the Bible says we ain't supposed to hate each other. But if we follow this law, don't you think that'll drop the uh, the murder rate in Chicago? 
It would. Don't you think so, Laquan? Bring it out. Because it starts with hatred. Because all the murder stems with stems from hate. You're not gonna kill someone that you love, right? You're not. You're not gonna kill someone you love, but you will kill someone that you hate, though. But the Bible says you should not hate your brother. It all stems from this right here. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke. Oh, you hold that. We got it's time to cast. Let me cast down for a little bit. It's a time and place for everything. Ecclesiastes 3. Bring it we'll go back to that. It's a time and place for everything. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 1. Bring it up. To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. So it's a time and season for everything, right? Read verse 8. Verse 8. A time to love and a time to hate. A time to what? A time and a time to hate. Read from a time to love. The time to love. Come on. And the time to hate. Come on. A time of war and a time of peace. Yes, it's a time for a place for everything. You should want to hate what's going on in our communities. Yes. You should want to hate the high murder rate. Yes, that's bad. And that's why we out here, men of God, at war for the hearts and minds of our people, trying to get our people to change with the word of God. That's right. Because everything has failed us in this time. Politics has failed us. Right. Religion has failed us. Right. The hood has failed us. Our elders has failed us. Well, it's going to take real men of God to come back and show our people the right way. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.